This is drawing 9 in 3D. This is what drawing 9 looks like <clears throat> as the dimensioned drawing that I give you in order to create that 3D object. There's quite a bit to this. It's going to take a little while, so bear with me. We are going to <clears throat> draw this basic outline, and we're going to extrude it. Keep in mind this is the same object, just viewed from two different sides, so a side view and a top view. We're going to draw this basic shape and extrude it this far. It's the same object, remember? So one. Um, then we are going to set up a new drawing plane, <clears throat> and we're going to punch some holes in it. And we're also going to carve out these little recessed areas. You can see here just how far down they go. Um, then, when that's done, we are going to add chamfers in 3D solid mode. We're not going to do chamfers on the sketch, because everything is measured from a corner in the sketch. And so if you shave those corners off now, they just make life a little bit harder later on. So save your chamfers for the end again. So, wrong drawing. Let me close that. I meant to go back here. Let's take a look at what these sketches look like and then go from there. So I'm going to turn on the first sketch. And I'm going to go to the front view. And I'm even going to hide or suppress that extrusion so we can see that and open up the sketch. Okay, notice I didn't trim away the bottom even though it is trimmed away here. I did that because um, that breaks a few dimensions and I didn't, didn't want to have to redimension that. Um, and it doesn't make any difference for the extrusion. We're just going to extrude this area here when we extrude it. <laughs> From there, let me unsuppress this. I needed a new drawing plane. I needed to be able to work here. So I created a new plane and you can see that get highlighted there when I move over it and I created a new sketch on it. So it'll, it'll be easier to see the sketch on the plane if I do that and turn it on. So there's a the second sketch. You'll notice not everything here is black and well defined. Um, it is on this side because it runs I just ran these lines right to that edge and stopped them there but on this side I didn't I ran out it doesn't matter that you run out of the edge for these because we're using those as cutaways so we're just going to extrude straight up and remove material so it's okay that those go beyond <clears throat> I could have stopped at this edge but over here there is no edge to stop at because that's just a solid face all the way up through so somewhere I was gonna have to go outside and so it didn't really matter um, from there, I extruded the holes. You can see those lit up in orange. Next, I extruded the recessed areas, cut those away. And finally, I added, well, now I'm getting all kinds of things highlighted. I added those two chamfers there. And lastly, I added those two chamfers there. <clears throat> so let's go do this. This is going to take a little bit. I'm going to go back here and just create a new throwaway document for this. And I'm going to start with this front view and start a sketch. I'm going to start with a circle. And then I'm going to right click on the front view view normal to sketch and let's go take a look at that image again where is that image okay I started with a circle because well everything is sort of measured from the center of that circle keep in mind the center point of the circle here if you follow those lines is not the base of the object okay that's very important if you make it the base of the object your object is going to be the wrong size so we're going to zoom back out a little bit <clears throat> and maybe minimize that so I can just shove it off to one side as I'm drawing. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my circle 
it has a radius of 0.4755 um, plus or minus 0 0.0010. That's for manufacturing purposes. That's if you were to laser cut this. It could be off by as much as that. If you were going to 3D print it, it could be off by as much as that. Um, as far as drawing goes, you draw it exactly the size it's supposed to be, and you don't worry about these uh, extra numbers on the end. Those are called tolerances, plus or minus. So we're looking for a radius of 0.4755. This is a fairly small object. So 0.4755, unless you feel like doing the math, um, times 2. There's our basic <clears throat> circle shape that everything else is based on. Now it would be nice if we had a line that was 1.5 long and 0 .3, uh, 0 0.03 off of the center of that circle. So I am going to I think I'm just going to make a line. I don't remember how I did this last time. Uh, there's lots of ways, so I'll just pick away. 1.5 and when I hover over it I can see it's horizontal so that's good I am going to put a point on the midpoint of this line I think that'll help and now I'm going to grab that point and drag it up here and line it up over the center of that circle and then just raise it up a bit so now it's centered and it's elevated we just don't have control over that elevation so let's put in a dimension for that so from there to there, that should be that 0 0.03. There we go. So it's not too high off the center, but it is off the center. From there, let's go up. Oh, I'm scrolling through drawings. That's not what I want. I want to zoom. OK, I'll just drag it around. We want this edge here, which is the 0 0.06. So I'm just going to take a line and go up vertically, of course, 0 0.06. We need this 45 degree line. See, 45, two of them, one on each side. Uh, but it needs to go up 0.59. You just eyeball that at first, put the dimensions in after. <clears throat> so that looks good. That looks good. I'm going to stop at that center line. We might as well mirror this all over to the other side. No reason in drawing it twice. Let's go ahead and add some dimensions to make sure we control everything about this. The angle of that line should have been 45. And the height of that line, not the length, because the length would be 0.723, which is very wrong. The height is what we're interested in, 0.59. There we go, it's at the right spot. Now we'll go get the mirror command use that plane as the mirror plane and just click these lines there we go our basic object is done well the basic outline anyway <clears throat> we're ready for the first extrusion so I am going to click the extrude button click that shape type in how long this is if you recall, it's 1.0. It's actually already 1.0, so we're happy. Um, hang on, I want to make sure I'm recording. I forgot whether or not I actually clicked record. That would be silly. Okay, basic shape is done. Let's go ahead and add some holes. Um, for the, In fact, I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to do this slightly different than the last time I did it. Uh, I'm going to put my... No, I'm not. I changed my mind. Never mind. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to create a new drawing plane. I was tempted to work on the very bottom, but working on the bottom wouldn't allow me to do these elevated cutouts without creating a, a new drawing plane and replacing my circles. Since all the circles share the same center points, um, I don't want to have to remeasure and recreate all those center points. So I am going to create a new drawing plane now. 
it. What I'm going to do, if I can stop clicking on things, is I'm going to set it up using these corners. I'm going to use three points. So new plane, give me three point, and I'm just going to go corner, corner. Oh, I almost missed. Did I get it? No. Maybe? Hello, oh, it's taking so long. There we go, third one. And I'll hit OK. And you can see that that plane goes right through there, right at that intersection. I'm going to press P to hide all these various drawing planes so they don't get in the way and start looking kind of confusing. And what I'm going to do is go to a top-down view, and I'm going to start placing things. Now, keep in mind, look at the way this is running. See that flat spot at the top? My flat spot is running vertically. That one was running horizontally. If I want them to match, I'm going to have to give it a little spin like that. And now they match. Uh, the only problem with giving it a spin like that is on shape um, still thinks that top um, vertical is this way and horizontal is this way. So you'd have to think sideways to work like this. Uh, it could work though because it'll mean the dimensions line up. But we'll see. If we have to rotate it, we have to rotate it. Let's put some circles on here. I'm going to go into the sketch, pick the sketch plane that I created, and draw a circle. And while I'm at it, I'll draw another one. And then I'm going to lock in horizontally and draw two more. And I'm going to lock in, if I can, to the midpoint here drag up and draw two more okay that's a lot of circles what are we using all those circles for well you got the holes in the in the centers here but each of these rounded corners could also just be a circle with a line coming off tangent and going to the edge so that's what all those circles are for that's gonna make our lives a lot easier also just looking at these holes you can follow the note and see that there are three of them. They all have a diameter of 0.125 and pass straight through. So I am going to add a diameter to one of these. Uh, 0.125. Notice my text is sideways because, well, we're working sideways. We rotated our view. I am going to add another diameter to this arc here. I just gotta find it. If you look all the way down, I can see an arrow touching one of those arcs running off here. Radius of 0.109. So, dimension. Radius of 0.109, so 0.109, but we get we have a diameter right here, so times two. There we go. Those are the only ones I'm gonna dimension. I don't want extra dimensions all over the place cluttering things up, so I'm going to use the equal constraint. That hole equal to that hole. This outside circle equal to this outside circle. <clears throat> Same thing down here. That outside circle, that outside circle, this hole, this hole. Okay, now everything is the same size. Everything is still blue, though, because it doesn't know where it is. Let's place them. You can see this one's 0.25 from the corner and 1.32 from the one down below. So dimension 0.25 from the corner. And 1.32 from the one down there. And 0 0.09 from this edge all right this one's happy this one's happy time to do this one over here we've got a 0.5 from center to center so let's go ahead and throw that in 0.5 I will not have to measure this vertically to see how far it is from center to this edge because when I created it I dragged it off of that center so they're already lined up 
So everything here is happy. Let's add some lines. And then one going up, one going out to the left. So I'm just going to grab this circle pretty much anywhere. And I'm going to go up. And I'm going to go over. I'm going to come back down and grab that circle again. Now, why did I go up and out? Um, I need to close the shape. Remember, it's not touching an edge over here because of that slope, the way this is ramped up. That's just a, a line in the middle of space, basically. I'm going to constrain this line to be perfectly straight vertical, this line to be per perfectly straight horizontal. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm also going to use the tangent constraint. Make that tangent to that circle, that tangent to that circle. That side's happy. I'm going to trim that. And now I could do all this again over here, but why? Let's go ahead and throw in a quick mirror line from the midpoint on that side to the midpoint on that side. Mark that as a construction line. And start my mirror command. There's my mirror line. That, 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 and that. Come over here with the trim command to get rid of that. Um, this happened last time to me too. For some reason, the, trimming them like that breaks something. So I just have to delete that dimension. And when I do, I think because of the mirror, everything stayed black and well-defined. Um, so that ended up just being an extra dimension in the end. Uh, so that looks good. <clears throat> Let's finish this up down here. A line from this circle should hit this edge. Come over here somewhere, hit that circle again. We're going to constrain these. Remember, we're sideways, so these are actually both going to be horizontal. And we're going to constrain them again tangent. Now, if you're wondering how I'm constraining anything, since I never went up to my constraints menu, um, remember. The, a lot of these constraints can be accessed from the keyboard. So I just press T for tangent and H and V for horizontal and vertical. That's how I was using those. I'm going to press M, another hotkey for trim. Let's get rid of that, that, that right there. Hmm. It is no longer happy with me. I don't think I care. It's no longer happy because of the trim. Uh, but everything else was in good shape before that. Um, for now, I'm going to say that's good enough because it's going to give us what we want in 3D space. So, good to go. I'm going to create the holes first and then work with the cutouts around them. Uh, now, here's a problem. If I go and select my extrude tool and I try to select these holes, I can't get to them. They're inside this object. But I can right click on this object and choose Make Transparent. Now I can get to my holes. And I can click, click, and click. Got them all. Notice they are going down right now. Uh, well, that's interesting. Some of my. Oh! Well, there we go. I <laughs> never had that menu pop up and line up perfectly over my extrude menu before. I was wondering what was going on there. Um, we're currently in add mode. I want to go to remove. And you can see the arrow pointing up. You can see this arrow pointing up. And they're, they're just going up, which means they're not coming out of the bottom. We need them to come out of the bottom, too. So instead of blind, I'm going to choose symmetric. And that way the holes go out the top and bottom. And I am going to leave it with a depth of one um, because that's more than long enough to come through top and bottom from where they are. And I'll just right click and exit the make transparent. There we go. We punched all of our holes. Let's go back and do this again. Another extrude. 
and again we're gonna make this transparent and we're gonna turn on sketch 2 we're not done with that we're looking for these areas this time and it's another remove not an add and it needs to go up is it going up yep it's going up and we can go blind we could actually measure it we could go up to next up to face I'm gonna just go up to next so it's gonna go up until it hits the next face we'll hit OK we'll get rid of the transparent effect and there you go we've got those cutouts around the holes Let me spin this over here as you can see that side that's what we're looking for the only thing left now is to cut the corners of the object so they match so that we've got a little cut off there on each side and likewise cut off here on each side we've got two notes for those chamfers <clears throat> two of them at 0.2 45 degrees and two of them at 0.34 45 degrees any chamfer that's at 45 degrees is going to have the same numbers on both sides um, so we can start our chamfer command here and when it comes up with a default option of equal distance that's the same number on both sides so we don't even have to change the option in fact right now the default distance for me is 0.2 that may just be luck but I'm just gonna click that corner it's gonna cut that one I'm gonna come over here click that corner and cut that one and I'm done with the chamfer command because the other side has different numbers so I can't do them all the same and we're gonna chamfer this side now grab the chamfer command set it to 0.34 this time and grab that corner good and grab that corner and accept I'll turn off sketch 2 so it's not cluttering things up and there is your finished drawing 9 let's go with the top asymmetric view beautiful